Yeah, uh, so this is actually a work uh, of um, it's part of the PhD dissertation of my student, Kyle Chom. Uh, he uh, hasn't been able, he was not able to come here. Instead, he decided to get married and uh, go on a honeymoon, so I'm stuck in uh, giving this talk. Um, but um, if you look at the uh, previous studies um, that try to characterize DNS behavior, it's usually at the aggregate level, you know, either at the root or at TLD, top level domain like .com, or on a per organizational um, um, uh, granularity. Or um, uh, recently, we did some work where we characterized uh, DNS behavior uh, at a um, at, at home granularity. So, if you have multiple devices at home, they would be all lumped together. Uh, at the same time, it's interesting to see what kind of behavior we can expect from a single user-facing device. Um, first of all, it sort of just uh, generally very interesting, uh, and you know whether you expect. Uh, an individual user to visit 1,000 websites per day or maybe 100 websites per day, issue 10,000 queries or issue 1,000 queries, um, who knows. Um, it, it also helps in uh, some specific, uh, specific uh, context. Um, if you know the expected user behavior, you would know what deviates from it and uh, um, detect anomalies. It would uh, help you with uh, planning the resources for a resolver that you're deploying at your organization, you know how many users are going to be there. And uh, it is also, uh, as uh, uh, Steve mentioned, uh, um, handy for other studies because it gives you some uh, point of reference. And so the ultimate goal when we started out this work was to try to develop the um, model for, uh, for, for a client, be for DNS client behavior. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay, but uh, hopefully this work is an in initial step in that direction. Um, there are two main challenges in trying to identify, to sort of characterize behavior on a per device basis. One challenge is that many devices hide behind the common net. Another challenge is that many devices, I individual devices, uh, assume different uh, personalities on the internet because they get different IP addresses over time from DHCP servers. We were lucky um, in being able to sort of um, untangle these two challenges because first of all, at our university, um, there is a policy that prohibits NAT uh, devices uh, f from being used. Uh, so there are some university um, blessed NAT devices like the wireless gateways, but we knew their IP addresses, so we uh, excluded those from our study. Another, um, um, another uh, aspect is that we were also able to um, get the tap from, we were able to uh, get the feed from the D DHCP servers, so we could track what uh, uh, IP addresses are assigned to the same MAC addresses over time. So we were able to characterize the behavior on a per MAC address basis rather than on a per IP address basis. And also uh, to, um, to check uh, whether our instrumentation didn't lose um, packets, basically what we did was, you know, we, we uh, installed the, um, the taps before our uh, university resolvers and we were able to see all the queries uh, coming to the resolvers from the user devices. Um, but uh, to see if we uh, didn't miss any, um, we also had the uh, feed from uh, the um, resolver uh, query logs. Those we couldn't use directly because the query logs had only one second time, time granularity, but we knew that they existed and so we could see if all of them could be found in our packet traces. And in fact, uh, within 1% that was the case. So uh, we believe that most of, uh, uh, we, we didn't lose much uh, activity in our tabs. So uh, the other thing is that what we found is that there are many devices that were not user facing. So we found, you know, uh, when we realized that, you know, we tried to identify devices that we were interested in, that is devices in, with which users interact. And what we've done is basically we used the following markers. You know, we realized, oh, the user devices are probably used for web browsing 
most of the websites now use Google Analytics. So we see, oh, if there's a, a queries for Google Analytics, then it might be a user device. Another thing is that if it is a user device, um, then the user often does web searching. So we looked at like 10 most popular web search engines and we uh, uh, identified devices that issued queries for those host names. Um, another one um, was, uh, and the other two were capitalizing on the fact that these were our university population. So we knew that they would probably check email that is Google hosted and uh, we also knew that they would probably use a uh, single sign-on <laughs> uh, um, portal. So uh, we looked for those website, uh, for those uh, host names and identified those. So um, the, the other devices that didn't exhibit any of these markers, we tried to see what, what they were and they were uh, uh, interesting, interesting cases. It turned out that our dorms are equipped with the laundry machines that have internet connection. You know, they, and then, you know, People, of course, used uh, um, uh, you know, gaming consoles and um, photocopiers that are capable of um, e e emailing the uh, images, scanned images, and so forth. So we are only focusing on the last category, which is user-facing devices. And after um, uh, that kind of filtering, we ended up with this, uh, with this uh, data set. So we split it into two parts. You know, uh, coming from the dorms, that the sort of more typical of residential behavior, and from the office. And in, 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 the, in this talk, and actually in the paper as well, um, uh, let's just focus on the dorms behavior. So when we look at the behavioral characteristics and uh, that could go towards building the model of the, uh, of the user behavior, um, these are the kind of questions that would be of interest. First of all, what is the client activity level? You know, how many queries did they, uh, a client issues? How many host names uh, these queries are for? Uh, then, uh, what are the patterns of arrival of the queries? How bunched together they are, you know, and, and so forth. Then, the next question is, what are the host names being queried? Um, uh, the name popularity distribution, the temporal locality of, the, of, of different names, how often the person reissues the query for the same name, and then um, whether the names come independently uh, from, from, from that popularity distribution or there, or, or there are dependencies between the names. <clears throat> Another interesting question uh, was uh, whether clients behavior is stable over time for the given client and whether it is different across different clients. You would expect that all of us use you know, Google.com, but then uh, uh, there are some other uh, um, uh, host names at the tail of the popularity distribution which might characterize different clients quite, uh, quite distinctly. And so um, um, when we looked at the average client activity per day, we can uh, characterize it from three different ways. One is how many queries the client issues, and that would be the blue line there. Um, the other one is um, how many different host names the client is querying for, and how many SLDs, that is uh, the second level domains, like you know, if it is for images.cnn.com, cnn.com would be SLD, second level domain. And the what, what we've done here is that we looked at the mean counts per day for these th uh, three metrics and we built a, a, a C CDF for, 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 for the clients um, uh, according to these three metrics. And one thing, that, one takeaway is that a typical client exhibits a very sort of modest activi uh, DNS activity. You know, uh, the typical client uh, visits 150 uh, web properties and uh, around uh, 400 host names and issues like 2,000 queries per day. That, that's basically what it is. And, and even uh, at the 95 percentile, the amount of activity uh, is not much more. So just, you know, if you see a client that issues 100,000 queries per day, you may, you may see if it is infected by something. Or, these uh, you know, kind of things start developing rules of thumb of a client behavior that, that we could keep in mind. Um, another issue was uh, um, the patterns of interquery arrivals for the client. So this is a graph over here is, uh, is plotted as, uh, as follows. We just looked at all the inter-arrival times from the same client. 
across all the clients. And we built a CDF of that. So, uh, and, and, and then, if you look at the inter-arrivals from the same client, but only focusing on that client, then it could be a different distribution line for that particular client. So you could have a thousand different lines. And then we looked at the uh, lines that are closest to the aggregate line and that covers 90% of these different individual client lines. And that is the shaded area. So the shaded area, so the individual client distribution into arrival times are somewhere in this area. And one thing is to note is that the shaded area is somewhere uh, uh, sort of hugging, it, it, it's more or less hugging the aggregate area. So you can probably um, expect to be able to characterize the individual client um, inter-arrival times by this aggregate inter-arrival times. And in fact, that is, that, 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 that bared out. Um, and uh, we found that the individual inter-arrival query time could be well modeled by a combination of two um, probability distributions. One weighable for the um, small inter-arrival times up to 22 seconds, and the other one is Parita for the tail of the inter-arrival times. So uh, individual clients had different parameters in these distributions, but the distribution shapes were the same across different clients. So that was an encouraging first step towards the model, so that, that you can build the model eventually, uh, at least of this behavior. Um, now the next question is what host names clients query? And this could be characterized, the popularity of different host names could be characterized from two different metrics. One is how many queries come to different websites, to different uh, host names. The other one is how many different clients query that name. And um, these two graphs reflect these two metrics and um, these are your typical log-log uh, popularity distributions. So on the x-axis, um, uh, we have an index of the host name sorted in the decreasing popularity. And on the y-axis, it's just a fraction of the activity towards that host name. And <coughs> first, uh, what you can see immediately, in terms of the number of queries per host name, you can see the power law uh, uh, pattern towards most of the, of, the, of the range. You can also see that same power law uh, pattern here, but it sort of uh, settles later. The, <clears throat> the other interesting thing is that these two metrics both characterize the uh, popularity of host names, but they're not very strongly correlated with each other. So the, the uh, Pearson correlation between these two um, between these two sets was only um, uh, 0 0.5. And we did find stark examples of a name that is often, very often queried, but by very few clients. And then also the other way um, that was queried by all the, by many, many clients, but not often uh, uh, queried by each client. So, <coughs> so um, th those examples are in the paper. Another interesting uh, uh, part is that oftentimes, you know, we tend to say, oh, let's focus on the host names or on some phenomenon that really counts. You know, let's drop off the tail. It turned out that this tail, in, as far as DNS is concerned, accounts for a very significant portion of the overall activity. You know, 51% of host names are only looked once in our week of observation. And if you look at the number of um, host names that are only queried by 1% of our clients, those constitute 95% of the host names. And they actually are responsible for 20% of all the queries. So one interesting sort of part for us was, you, you know, when we need to develop, when we get to developing the, the model, we cannot discard unpopular names. Because in aggregation, these are where the activity is. Now, uh, the next question was uh, if we can develop sort of a, a, a sense for the size of the working set for an, of an in, in individual client. That is, how often the same client revisits the same host names, uh, uh, requeries the same host name um, f 
from the previous time. How many other host names are in between those two queries for the same host name? Okay, and and basically the get the, the getaway is is is, is uh, first of all the stack distance. That's called the stack distance in the caching studies. The stack distance that is the number of interleaving queries between two queries for the same host name is small. For 80% of the clients, it's less than 100. <coughs> um, and second of all, there are occasionally large, large stack distances that we see because the mean stack distance is pushed to the right relative to the median stack distance. So there are outliers that, you know, you do revisit um, occasionally some, some, um, uh, some host names. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Here's a, a question that we were not sure how, how sort of pertinent it is going to be for the model, but it was interesting uh, nonetheless. <coughs> the question is this. If you look at the same client, how stable is their behavior from day to day? And if you look at different clients, how different their behavior in terms of the DNS uh, 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 between themselves. And so what we've done is the following. So we have a trace for a week. We look at one client and we say, okay, in day one, this client perhaps visited, you know, issued five queries. And it issued, uh, you know, host name, this host name it issued one time, this host name it issued two times. And so we build a vector of fractions of times that every host name in the, in, the, in the data set has been visited. So if some host names this client never visited in this day, there would be zero. Understood? So, so this is the frequency of the host names visited by the client on this day across the whole set of host names that we've seen in the trace across all the clients. So we get that, oops. So we get that vector for this one day. Then we get the same vector for this client for the day two, and day three, and so forth. So we can then do cosine similarity between these vectors and see how different the client's behavior is from day to day. Then we can do, we compare that, client, that, that uh, uh, usage vector with the, say, with the usage vector of the same or different day of different clients. And then we can see how uh, different clients are similar or dissimilar. And here's what we found. Um, the blue line measures the minimum amount of similarity of the same client from different days. So we take uh, one client, we have uh, five days trace, and we look at the pairwise similarities and we cho ch uh, ch uh, choose the, the minimum. And that's one number for this client. And then we build the CDF of these numbers. And the red line is we take different clients and we compare the similarities of the different clients at different days. And then we look at the maximum similarity that this pair of clients exhibits. And for this pair, that produces one number. And then we build the CDF of all these numbers for each pair of clients. And so what you can see is immediately is that this red line hugs the ordinate uh, coordinate. That means that the similarities are small even when we look at the maximum similarity between the two clients across all the days. When you look at the blue line, it hugs the x-axis, which means that the similarities within the same client from day to day are high. <coughs> and so that actually, so this, you know, this is some numbers, right? And so that actually gives us an indication that by observing the DNS activity of a client, you can actually fingerprint a client. Now, um, how much time do I have left? Less than two minutes. Less than two minutes, perfect. Um, so um, the other th thing is that, the, you know, intuitively we can expect that the uh, uh, DNS queries from the same client would come in bunches. Why? Because we have web pages that have a lot of embedded objects and they may come from different, from different uh, host names. So uh, uh, then that would res result in the burst of, um, of DNS queries. And so 
<coughs> that would uh, uh, produce this kind of behavior where you have this bunch of red, red queries, then there is a pause, then there is a bunch of blue queries, uh, um, and so forth. And, uh, you know, indeed, we took the time series of queries from the same client, and we used a, a very simple clustering algorithm to try to bunch them together. Um, and, and we've seen that majority of the queries, 80% of the queries, do belong to these clusters. But the clusters are, tend to be short, both in time, you know, most of them are less than 20 seconds, and in the number of queries they contain, individual clusters. M you know, median cluster size was just five queries. So <coughs> the other interesting part about the clusters is that you would expect that the cluster, if it is reflecting the uh, sort of different uh, embedded objects from the same web page, that they all sort of come from the same SLD. You know, if you're uh, visiting CNN.com, maybe there will be some headlines.cnn.com, finance.cnn.com, images.cnn.com, and so forth. It's not the case. Very small number of these, of these uh, uh, queries in the same cluster come from the same SLD. Most of them come from different SLDs, and that tells us that the web uh, 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 pages are really mashups. Um, the last uh, uh, point I wanted to, ma uh, to, to, to make was uh, that we, we tried to see if queries for different uh, uh, host names are dependent on each other. So you have a root, maybe, maybe it's a CNN.com, and then you have like finance.cnn.com that is always embedded. So we uh, tried to <coughs> see if there would be frequent co-occurrences like these dependent names on the root name. This is blurred by the DNS caching. So we couldn't uh, like really uh, um, get much progress in this direction, uh, but uh, uh, what, what, what little uh, progress we have made is in the paper. Okay, so to summarize, <laughs> um, this is really an initial preliminary state, uh, step towards the model of the behavior. And I'll tell you one stumbling block that prevented a, a better progress for us so far. And the stumbling block is to, to see to understand when is the model good. You know, do you want to check the stack, the stack, the, the stack distance? Do you want to check the um, uh, inter-query arrival times? Do you want to check the popularity of the, of, of the web pages, of, of, of the host names? When do you stop and say, okay, so this is the good model? And because if you're trying to, to, to uh, uh, match too many characteristics, you're overfitting. So that is something that we are, we are still grappling with. Um, but uh, the other thing is that um, clients exhibit very stable DNS behavior uh, uh, within the same client and distinct behavior from different clients. Um, the inter-arrival times are well modeled by analytical distributions and um, most of the DNS activity comes from unpopular name. Not most, but significant part of the DNS activity comes from unpopular name. So if you're trying to characterize DNS, you cannot just concentrate on Googles of the, of the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Time for questions. Thank you for this interesting talk. Uh, your second but last bullet, most of the NS activity from unpopular names, is this due to local caching of popular names? No, um, it's just uh, um, it, it, the, the short answer is we don't know, okay? Um, the, the popular names still are much more popular than, un <laughs> than unpopular names, but, but the unpopular names are in the millions. And so together, the, the mass of the queries that falls into those unpopular names is, is significant. Make sense? More questions? Did you try to model, did you have a look at um, aspects of the this arrival process other than inter-arrival times? Uh, other than inter-arrival, uh, what other? Um, we actually, yeah, we looked at, uh, we, we, we actually uh, observed some interesting 
some interesting uh, patterns beyond that just general inter-arrival uh, uh, distribution. Like we observed some periodic queries for some host names from some, web, from, from some clients. Um, uh, those were you know, distinctly present, but not sort of, th there was not a prevalent behavior. So like uh, we observed that um, some um, web-based email um, clients would periodically issue a DNS query. Um, but I, I mentioned it because just looking into rival times may they'd be very difficult just from that to be able to spot in other structure that's happening on longer time scales. Well, we did, first of all, we didn't have a long, long trace. Our trace is only one week. Um, second of all, um, Second of all, we did look at this uh, clustering of the of of uh, of the of the query arrival times, uh, but but that's the extent to which we looked at this. So, uh, when you collect a trace, are you just looking at uh, like laptop or or also mobile phones? I don't remember where you collect. Yeah, them. so we, we collected in front of the in front of the uh, resolvers. So we saw everything, but we didn't want to take the um, like mobile phones because they came through the wireless gateways, and and um, um, we weren't sure that they would not come from uh, that they would not come through the NAT. In, in fact, we knew that they, they came from from uh, through so the NAT. I was wondering, coming back to the popularity thing, whether this was due to no, no, no. Uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, smartphones, these wireless devices were excluded oh. because they they came through the NAT and uh, we thanks. couldn't. So unless you have a pressing question, let's thank the speaker and move to the next one.